This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. A lot of talk of late of how the Indian automobile market is coming back very smartly. It's not just volumes in terms of sales that are going up, but it's the overall potential and outlook that's a lot more positive. Sentiment all around also seeming to come back very smartly. And within that, you also get lots of new car launches. We are coming to you from one of those new car launches, one that's been fairly anticipated the last few months. Honda's Mobilio, which is the seven-seater MPV from the company, was shown at the Auto Expo and has now been launched fairly competitively priced as well. That and a lot more happening at Honda is what I want to talk about with uh, our guest today, the President and CEO of Honda Motor India. And uh, that, of course, is Mr. Hironori Kanayama. Good to see you. Good to see you. And, and uh, welcome here to our uh, unveiling today. <laughs> Thank you so much. The cars are behind us and they, they're shiny and nice. And uh, congrats again to you and your team. Uh, the space itself, it's not a space that Honda has been in in the past, but uh, it, it seems to be one of the segments over the past few months that uh, holds more promise than maybe the rest of the overall market. Uh, Honda clearly agrees. Yeah. Uh, the, we have launched today first Honda's MPV that we call mid-size, spacious and stylish MPV. And that is intended for the uh, large family who are not happy with the sedan or small SUVs. And then we see a lot of demand in this market. That is why we have launched this more video. You had two strong products in this segment before you came in. Uh, one, of course, has been the benchmark setting Innova from Toyota, which is a slightly larger vehicle, uh, also seen more as a fleet vehicle than a family vehicle now by many. And the other end, of course, is the Maruti Suzuki Ertiga, both Japanese rivals. But uh, the Ertiga seen more as a, a slightly more frugal offering, not very premium. Uh, was it intentional to try and target the space between these two? Well, uh, this car, Honda has uh, 5.5 million car sales of the MPB globally in the, in the last 20 years. And uh, all the such elements of the Honda's technology has been incorporated in this model. And uh, we thought this was the best package for Indian customers. That is the reason. Was it primarily the fact that this car shares its platform with the Brio and the Amaze, also shares drivetrains with many of your other cars? Uh, was that the compelling reason for launching this here? I mean, you have, like you said, so many other MPVs already that uh, Honda sells in other markets, the Freed, also a fairly compact uh, MPV for that matter. So was that the compelling reason? Well, uh, I think it's about a comparison, but we just, you know, with the uh, other uh, Brio Amaze platform to realize the reasonable pricing for customers so that we can have more customers joy in the, with the Honda products. Now the car has already done well in Indonesia, as you uh, shared with us, 46,000 units already sold since January. That's a fairly aggressive number because, of course, Indonesia is a bigger market for MPVs as well. But in India, do you think that, uh, not that number, but do you think that that kind of potential still exists to try and maybe expand the segment in a very big way? I think, uh, I think uh, potential is very, very high because the family number on average here in India is about six people. Therefore, the potentiality must be very high and we are anticipating that market will grow a lot in the future. You have opened bookings a few days ago and uh, your uh, teaser campaign has been on air, on television, in print. So what's the initial response been like? What are your dealers telling you? Uh, so far we have got about uh, 6,000 bookings, which is far beyond our expectation. Therefore, it's very encouraging uh, that we, we are so happy with it. You know, some people would have liked you to have maybe even lower prices. But uh, on the other hand, you've surprised some people with your prices. There is always a fear that uh, you know you'll you'll notch up a large number of bookings, and then there'll be a long waiting period, and after that you'll increase prices. What is the strategy? Well, uh, first of all, we made some estimation for the market demand, but uh, we increase it the as as market as uh, demand grows. And besides, we have uh, started production in the uh, Tapkara second plant. Then uh, we have some more room to produce more. So. In that sense, I don't think there's too much worry about our long time waiting period. Do you have a particular strategy when it comes to the model portfolio in terms of how you will divide the production between the two plants? Well, the matter is how to realize the best, highest quality and uh, most reasonable cost. 
Therefore, uh, when we have uh, more suppliers near factory, we produce that smaller to reduce logistic cost. But currently, what is the breakup? I mean, what cars are coming out of Tapukara? What cars are coming out of Greater Noida? Uh, we produce the uh, mobilio in GNU first, uh, first uh, plant, and uh, we are currently producing Amaze in the Tapukara plant. The Amaze and also, of course, the city uh, continue to get very, very good response from the market. Uh, with the city in particular, ever since you've launched, I think, you know, that you can't make enough of those, that's for sure. Uh, were you anticipating that much of a demand for the city? And did you think it's come mainly because you now have a diesel? After the launch of the city, UC segment has grown by the support of the, our launch. Therefore, but uh, we didn't expect that much will be sold. And uh, it's a pity we have to keep customer waiting slightly long. But we'll catch up with it very soon. It's a, it's a great number that you have there, so congrats on that as well. Thank you. Uh, with Honda, one finds that, not just in India, but in other markets as well, the, the customer expectation is a little bit different, a little more premium than what you see with some of your rivals, even though you operate in the same market, which explains maybe sometimes your pricing strategy, also your positioning. Uh, but th with that you know, expectation, there's also a lot more that maybe people start asking you in terms of, I know now today there's been a big discussion about safety features, for example. How do you address that for a market like India, which is constantly evolving? Well, I think uh, we, what we are aiming at is uh, to be the most trusted company in India. That means customer can rely on us. And to do so, first of all, we have to supply the highest quality products. And in addition to that, we are confident about the high quality of uh, our after sales service. Then the customer will support us Instead of just not because of products, customer will be happy with the after sales service. Especially, we got uh, rank number one in take two consecutive years in the sales satisfaction index by JD Power uh, Quality Survey. In that sense, I think uh, we can further enhance our Honda's brand image. Since I mentioned that point about safety, I know everybody's asking you that question today, but uh, what do you think is going to happen in the, in the short term when it comes to? One, the customer expectation, and two, maybe even a change in government regulation. Do you well, anticipate uh, something? Yeah, I think uh, safety is the most vital issue to anyone. And uh, I, therefore, we try to you know, add the safety equipment as much as possible. But, uh, we can, but uh, because customer has a preference, so we give some option so that they can opt for any, any uh, equipment they like. What do you think is a good solution for this? Because very often we find that um, it is, of course, the higher variants which have, let's say, airbags or ABS, um, and, and the base variants, like you said, because of the customer demand, you have to keep the prices as competitive as possible. Uh, do you think we'll have, finally, a, a, a sort of a situation where maybe safety options like airbags or like ABS could just be an option that you pay extra for at any variant? Do you think that's a good solution? Well, I think it can be a partial solution. The matter is how to drive safety. <laughs> That's it. Therefore, first, I think uh, uh, driver should learn how to drive safely. And uh, I think many of your people have been in Japan, and uh, the, you, I am sure you are aware that they drive very, very strictly <laughs> to keep traffic low. I think that's the first one. Then, but uh, hardware must fall. But for, to do so, I think we have changed customers mindset in a sense, yes. to, so that they can be more safety oriented. And uh, we are thinking about uh, to do something as a car manufacturer to change customers, uh, the customer's mindset or to teach them how to drive safely. When we realize it, we'll let you know. And do you think uh, that in India in particular, the government's role does become more important? Yes, I think the government role is never small. And, and you talk to government, of course, like all manufacturers do. Uh, issues like safety, like environmentally friendly cars. Um, now that we have a new government in place, are you hopeful that some of that might get more impetus? Yes. For instance, even Japan or states, to, to sell more the eco-friendly cars, we need subsidy. Toyota is likely to launch a fuel cell vehicle, but the government is already thinking of the giving some subsidies so that more people can buy and uh, to arrange infrastructure for that. So uh, 
I think the, we, the, uh, we expect a lot from government. There has been a hint of sorts from the finance minister, the new finance minister, Mr. Jaitley, uh, that when it comes to hybrid or when it comes to EVs, uh, there may be some sort of a policy coming, whether it's purely in terms of subsidy or, or some other incentive, we don't know yet. Uh, but given the fact that now the government is talking about that, how actively will you try and engage with government to sort of, you know, speed things along a little bit? Hmm. As far as technology is concerned, Honda is one of the top advanced manufacturers in the FCV or electric vehicle or hybrid. So we are ready to do anything. If only all we need just uh, some time for preparation, that's it. And do you think the customer in India is ready as well? Well, I think we should talk to more customers about it. How the importance, how the importance of the, those cars, green cars. I guess both for safety and that, uh, they both have the same sort of an approach where the customer yes. needs more awareness, more education. Uh, but okay, let's go back to the, the overall picture now. Uh, the, when you first came in, took over the operations here in India, Honda was in a very different position. Today we're talking about third largest car maker in India and, and tags like that. It's happened in relatively quick time and of course, a large sort of part of that is the fact that you now have diesel offerings. But what else, what else do you think has made this possible for you? Because the market wasn't exactly cooperating, you know, you, had a, you still had a difficult market, mm -hmm. even though you may have had a diesel coming in. The biggest change comes from the Honda's mindset. They realized, again, importance of the Indian market. Honda, in the last three years, Honda's learned the high potentiality of this market. Then we developed a car for this Indian market like Amaze, CD, and IDTEC engines, which Honda didn't have. So I think that is the strongest driving force to brought up this status at present. So it's, it's a change from within as well as what the customer has seen from outside. Uh, given that sort of new mindset and the fact that Honda globally looks at India a little bit differently today. Uh, do you think there is room to work on uh, products that are in, in different segments now and not just the expected segments? Mm. First of all, we hope, you know, the demand for bigger car like a Civic or Maze will expand. But even at present, there's a potentiality that the SUV market is growing. Therefore, we have not yet made any decisions so far, but uh, we are looking at this market as well. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly where I was going with this, you know this. <laughs> Thank uh, and you. we've talked about it in the past, especially on this platform or even what you've done globally with the Vessel. Um, the potential of a product like that in India is, is huge. Uh, do you think you need to, whatever the decision may be, do you think you need to arrive at that decision quickly? Because between the decision and the launch, there is always some time. Yes. But uh, we are trying to you know, reduce the lead time for, the, for their development. And uh, here we are expanding the function of the R&D in India. Therefore, I don't think we need that much time for the development of the car.